Roger Penske announces some major changes to NASCAR's next trip to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and we saw a few new features on the next gen car at Homestead this week, so let's talk about everything that's happened in the last couple of days. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove once again on the road. It's been a few months, I know, but we're back in the car. I'm actually kind of parked on a slope here, so I'm making sure the camera doesn't slide around here. Still finishing up moving into a new apartment. I got a lot of other stuff going on right now, so kind of trying to figure out where the best place to film this show is going to be from uh, from here on out. But yeah, I don't know. Today we're back in the car because I guess I'm nostalgic or something. Anyway, now really quick before I get too far into this video, I do want to give a big shout out to NASCAR Pole Position. They're a big supporter of this channel, and they just released their official NASCAR car 2020 season preview uh, edition of the magazine online for free i'll put a link to it down in the description so go check out nascar pole position they're a big supporter of what i'm trying to do over here so definitely go support their uh, their endeavors over there really cool magazine really great stuff 2020 preview edition is out now so yeah check them out let's talk about the news this week we'll start with roger penske it's not indy car news i know the man made some uh, major headlines by you know straight up buying the indy car series also buying the indianapolis motor speedway but in one of his biggest move so far since becoming the head of that racetrack, he announced a major change to the upcoming NASCAR race weekend over July 4th weekend. Penske announced on Wednesday that the NASCAR Xfinity Series will be running the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course configuration on their July 4th race here in 2020. This will be the first time that stock cars have run the IMS road course configuration ever, and it'll be the fifth road course now on the Xfinity Series schedule. This is a pretty big, pretty crazy announcement. So now that weekend in July, July 4th will be the Xfinity race on the road course, the Roval layout of sorts. And then overnight, they're gonna switch it up. And then for Sunday's Brickyard 400 for the NASCAR Cup Series, they will still be running the traditional oval or rectangle layout, I guess, of Indianapolis. It'll be the same Brickyard 400 we've become used to seeing. And the other cool part about this news is that now both the Xfinity and the Cup race will both be airing on the main broadcast NBC channel. So no NBCSN, you're not going to need any funky cable channels. Both races that weekend will be on the main NBC. So that's pretty cool. Do something good for uh, Xfinity Series ratings, of course. Also announced yesterday, Matt DiBenedetto will be testing uh, this upcoming week, actually. He'll be testing the Indianapolis road course layout. Uh, maybe a, a couple slightly variant configurations in a stock car, in an Xfinity Series car. Uh, they chose Matt DiBenedetto because he's not going to race in the race over the summer, and they didn't want to give a competitor in that race an unfair advantage of letting them test, you know, test the track before anyone else. So Matt DiBenedetto is going to be, he's a Cup Series driver, so he's just going to test it and he's going to report back and they're going to make any adjustments needed. Uh, but yeah, so we'll see a race car, a stock car on the Indianapolis road course within the next week and we'll see a race here in just a few months. So pretty wild announcement. This obviously comes from the fact that NASCAR and its leadership has been very vocal in recent months in the last couple of years that they want to add more road courses to the NASCAR schedule. I don't think they want to make NASCAR, you know, a road course series. They don't want to turn it into IMSA. They don't want it to be like IndyCar where it's like half and half or I don't actually know the exact percentage of road courses to ovals and IndyCar, but they don't want to make it, they don't want to oversaturate the NASCAR market with, with road course races, but given that the Cup Series a few years ago only had two road courses on the schedule and the fact that even the Xfinity Series only had three or four, understandable that they could add a few more. The fans have been asking for a few more road courses, road course racing, especially the Xfinity Series have proven to be pretty entertaining here in recent years, really forever. Uh, so this scene sounds like a win-win in my opinion. Hopefully we'll get a few more people out there to that race weekend because Lord knows attendance at the Brickyard 400 weekend has not been good in recent years. But hopefully this also provides a boost for the TV ratings and adds a boost of excitement for the Xfinity Series especially. But even for that, just that entire weekend. This is the first weekend now uh, that NASCAR will be running the Brickyard over the July 4th weekend. Traditionally, this is been the Coke 0400, the Daytona weekend. That's changed here in 2020, and I like that Roger Penske, that NASCAR, and everyone came together and agreed here to do something different, to make this weekend feel even more special, even more unique, give it its own identity of sorts. It's not too surprising to see Roger Penske, you know, already this quickly after purchasing the track, already making big announcements, already making big changes. Uh, that's not too shocking. Roger Penske, for a long time, has been a proponent of a NASCAR IndyCar doubleheader, both, both series running uh, at the same track on the same weekend. He's been in favor of that for a while now, and this sounds like maybe he's one step closer to making something happen. Perhaps a few years down the line, maybe in July sometime, we'll see the NASCAR Cup Series and IndyCar double up on a weekend at the Indianapolis Road Course. That could become a thing. Now, NASCAR did say in this announcement yesterday that right now they're just looking at this weekend for the Xfinity Series. They don't have any plans to move Cup Series to this road course, but you know NASCAR. You know how these things work. If the IndyCar race proves to be a huge hit in a few years, we'll probably see the Cup Series on the road course as well 
well because truth is not that many fans are excited about seeing cup cars on the traditional oval brickyard layout. It's just has not produced tr consistently great racing. So if this race this year is a hit for the Xfinity Series, you got to believe they're going to try to make a way, uh, try to figure out how to get cup series cars on that layout as well. At some point, might be a few years down the line, but this is now a big stepping stone towards possibly landing what Roger Penske really wants, an IndyCar NASCAR doubleheader. And if he, if he has to get that, if he wants to make that happen, of course he wants to make it happen at the track he owns now. I think that'd be a huge deal for both series personally. Now, I have seen some criticisms about this announcement, and I think where you stand on this whole you know, NASCAR in Indianapolis, NASCAR on the oval versus the road course, it really just comes down to what do you think of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as a track? Pretty much undoubtedly, it is the most famous racing venue in the entire world. But most of that fame, that notoriety, is due to its history with IndyCar, with open wheel racing. It really just comes down to what kind of prestige, what kind of pedestal do you put the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on? And do you feel like NASCAR, a stock car series that didn't have a really deep history at, Indi at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, they only started racing there 20 some years ago. It really just comes down to whether or not you think NASCAR is kind of over here just trying to piggyback off of the history and success that IndyCar has had at this racetrack. Because that is, that is a fair criticism. That is kind of how it feels. NASCAR, the only reason they started going to the Brickyard is because of the fame that the Indianapolis 500 brought IndyCar. They thought by bringing the biggest stock car series in the world to this racetrack that it would be an instant hit as well. And it was. It was early Brickyard 400s were very successful. But since then, the glamour has kind of disappeared and now it really just feels like another average Cup Series weekend. NASCAR still considers the Brickyard 400 one of its crown jewel races. And there are some fans that like that, some fans that don't like that. A lot of fans are still bitter that NASCAR's left IR RP, Indianapolis Raceway Park, which is a little bit not too far away from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's a short track of sorts that uh, a lot of lower NASCAR series were still racing at even just a few years ago, but since then it's kind of been abandoned by NASCAR. Some fans just want NASCAR to go back to the little short track over there or run the road course they have over there. A lot of fans don't really care about NASCAR running the main Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but I really just think it comes down to what do you think of the racetrack Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Do you think it should be dedicated solely to IndyCar and the, the, the series that made the track great? Or do you think NASCAR, because it is the biggest racing series in America, should still be racing there? I, it's very interesting. I've heard a few different opinions, and it's really just kind of interesting. I have a hard time kind of pinning down where this, these opinions are all coming from. I think it's all very just based on what you think of the track itself and whether or not you think NASCAR is, I guess, worthy of racing Indianapolis or whether or not you think Indianapolis is worthy of NASCAR. I don't know. I, it's a weird dynamic. It's a weird thing. Hard to discuss. In my opinion, I like that the Xfinity Series is running the road course. I'm not one of those traditional fans who thinks NASCAR has to run the oval every year. Like, it has to be the Brickyard 400 around the oval configuration. I don't, I'm not a traditional fan like that. If NASCAR eventually uh, switches to the road course, in a few years, I'd be fine with that as well, as long as the racing is fun and entertaining. But you guys know me, I'm not really as big of a fan of just tradition for tradition's sake as a lot of other NASCAR fans or race fans, I feel like, are by comparison. So, uh, in my opinion, I like this move, I love it. I think it makes this weekend a lot more interesting, a lot more unique, and uh, I think the racing's gonna be better. I think it's gonna be a more fun race weekend. I think it'll sell a few more tickets. I, I don't know if I'll be over there, but maybe I'll try to get out there for that, because that would be pretty cool to see the first uh, stock car race at the road course. That would be pretty neat. Uh, so, kudos to Roger Penske. He's on the racetrack for less than a couple months and he's already making big moves, big schedule changes. So kudos to him, kudos to NASCAR and the Xfinity Series. This is going to be a, this is going to be fun. Anyway, transitioning from that topic, let's discuss the next gen car just a little bit more. Eric Jones tested the next gen car at a mile and a half at Homestead Miami Speedway Wednesday and Thursday, the last two days. I did a video a couple days ago where I talked about this being the most important next gen car test so far, just because there are so many intermediate tracks, so many mile and a halfs on the schedule, uh, getting the racing, getting the package, getting the car dialed in at those tracks is extremely important because fans are going to have to watch that type of racing a lot more. Uh, so it's important to get the car right at intermediate tracks. This is a very important test and we did see and hear a few notable changes. First thing some people noticed was the sound of the engine up at these high speeds here. NASCAR posted this clip uh, to their social media and the engine sounds different, noticeably different. <laughs> Definitely sounds deeper, a little bit more, you know, in the back of the throat, you know, uh, a good growling sound. I don't hate the sound. A lot of fans point out that it sounded kind of flat, and I agree with them there. It definitely sounds a little almost out of tune. I do kind of like the deeper, growlier sound, but yeah, it does sound a little off maybe to me in a way. Uh, some fans did point out that that video clip maybe wasn't the best uh, clip to showcase the sound of the engine. There's a lot of fans that were actually in attendance at this race because this race, or this uh, this testing session, I'm sorry, was 
open to the public. If you had a ticket for the upcoming Homestead Miami race weekend, they were letting you come in uh, and just general admission, just kind of watch the test from the grandstand. So a lot of people were there filming in person and you listen to some of other people's clips, other people's videos, and the car sounds not as different. Yeah, so from some of these other angles, car maybe still sounds a little bit different, but not as different as that initial clip sounded. Still, I'm sure a lot of people are going to have their opinions on you know, how that engine sounded. Remember, we are getting a new engine package entirely starting either in 2022 or 2023. So keep that in mind. We've already heard they're probably going to make some, add some electrical stuff to the engines. They're going to make a lot of changes to the engines, so don't get too caught up in the idea of what this prototype engine sounds like. NASCAR Eric Jones, nobody has confirmed yet how much horsepower is in this engine, how much horsepower they're testing with. Uh, I was watching some videos, some fan videos, people filming from the stands, and I was trying to kind of time the lap times, and it felt like most of the lap times, I was just, again, sitting there on my computer with a stopwatch, watching other people's videos, trying to time it as best I could. So not very accurate, but the most of the lap times I was coming away with were like high 33 second marks, like 33.8, 33.9. So, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely not running 900 horsepower, let me put it that way. Big spoiler still there, so it looks similar to the 2019 aero package we saw at intermediate tracks. They still have the notch splitter, which hopefully will help with the dirty air effect. The diffuser, the rear diffuser is still there. I noticed on the first day of testing, at least, they had this, uh, the way the splitter was kind of flipped up on the sides, almost like it had wings, like fins almost. Not sure if they just had that there for the test, maybe to help sense some things, but if that's actually something they're thinking of adding to the cars come race time, all right, not sure where that, what that will necessarily do. Maybe that'll help break up the air on the side of the car. I don't really know, but that was a notable change I saw. Yesterday, NASCAR posted another video of uh, actually inside the car of Eric Jones driving it, and we noticed something very surprising, I must say. Eric Jones shifting into fifth gear. Oh, all right, okay. Fifth gear now, that's a thing. I'm not gonna pretend to know a whole bunch about how all the different shifters work and you know the variance between uh, the old type of shifter and whatever it's known as, I guess, a sequential shifter. I've heard that word thrown on. I don't really know what that means, I'll be quite honest with you. Although Eric Jones did say in regards to the new shifter that he was very excited to get to use it on road courses. He thought it would be very fun over there. So take that, for, take that for what it's worth. Overall, this test, again, was really just a baseline systems test, making sure the car didn't fall apart at speed. But that being said, Eric Jones did offer some of his own insight uh, as to what he felt as far as grip is concerned, as far as arrow is concerned. He did offer some insight. Here's one of the things Eric Jones had to say about the mile and a half next gen prototype car. I think a lot of the arrow changes they've done are going to help as far as racing goes, especially racing in a pack. Other than that, as we're working on things, some driving characteristics are similar. I think there's definitely more grip to be had as far as what the car is capable of. I think as far as development goes, there is going to be a lot more mechanical grip available than what we currently have. Couple things there. First thing, Jones mentions racing in a pack, which not too surprising given the 2019 package, given the large rear spoiler we're seeing on the next gen car, given the seemingly still lower horsepower, you know, in the 500 range perhaps. Not surprising to hear Eric Jones talk about racing in a pack, because I think that's still what NASCAR kind of wants to get at some of the intermediates. They want to get a little bit more of a pack racing feel, so not too shocking there, but some fans will like that, some fans won't like that, obviously. Then the second thing there, Eric Jones talks about how the car is going to be capable of more mechanical grip. That is a key word. You know, a lot of fans want to hear that these cars are more on edge. They don't want to hear that there's more grip, but the key difference there is Jones is talking about mechanical grip. Right now, the 2019 slash, I guess, 2020 package is all about aero grip. The, the reason the cars stick in the corner is because of how the aero of the car is designed. It's not really about the underside of the car or how the car is necessarily built or put together underneath. Jones specifying that he thinks there'll be more opportunities for mechanical grip I think is actually a good thing. I think it'll mean that the teams and drivers have more input in how their cars handle on these racetracks. So I ultimately think that is a, a better thing than say more aero grip than what we've had in the last year or two. But beyond those couple things, Jones didn't say a whole lot else that we didn't already kind of know, or at least didn't echo what you know Austin Dillon and Joey Logano had already said. You know, the car drives different, it's gonna be new, it's futuristic, blah, blah, blah. All the talking points NASCAR wanted them to hit on. Eric Jones was sure to mention those. Uh, but that was the one, that was the one quote that I thought offered a little bit of insight, and obviously from what we could see on the track, I think that kind of echoes what Jones is saying. So next gen car is still 
months away. I mean, we're, the teams aren't even going to get the car until the middle of this year at the earliest, it sounds like. So we're still over a year away from actually seeing these cars in race conditions, and we're still many months away from the teams getting their hands on their own versions of the car. So still a long ways away, still some time for development, uh, but there you go. First intermediate test is in the books, offering a little bit of insight into what NASCAR is planning. Anyway, y'all, that's all I've got. Thank you for hanging out with me. As always, it's kind of a longer episode, but you know, this, this passenger seat right here, this is, this is for you. This is for everyone to hang out with me. So uh, yeah, we rode shotgun in today's episode. We just sat in the parking lot, but still, that's fun. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, all that great stuff. Remember to subscribe if you're new. We talk about NASCAR all the time, throughout the week, every week, regular season, off season, post season, all that stuff we're talking about. Racing, hopefully I'll be back in a more, you know, permanent looking setup here before too long uh, but thanks for hanging out with me and of course a big thank you to my patreon supporters as always couldn't do the show without the support i get from all of these patreon supporters look at these glorious folks i'm still in the process of just tweaking my patreon system and everything but i do appreciate all of you guys for continuing to support the show i'm planning on going to some racetracks this year even in just the next few weeks and uh, patreon support is huge in getting me out there and getting me uh, out and getting me out there with a the camera to provide content for you guys and uh, hopefully 2020 is a great great year 2019 was unreal 2020 I think it'll be a lot lot better even so thank you guys for the support really couldn't do it without you anyway all that's gonna do it I'll be back here very shortly with another episode thanks for the support and I will see you all again very very soon have a great rest of your week everyone have a great weekend